In terms of emotional impact, color has a great deal of impact on us. Let's look at a few examples. For example, if I just show you this red rectangle here, you're probably thinking a few different things. If you happen to be deeply in love with your significant other and that's on the top of your mind, you may be thinking of passion and love. Maybe you're particularly upset at that grade that you got recently, so you see anger. Maybe you look at things in terms of anxieties or you have more anxiety in your life than many people, you may look at red as danger, but you cannot look at a red field and not bring out some form of emotion, even if that emotion changes from day to day or emotional state to emotional state. Let's look at a couple others. If I show you yellow, then you're probably going to be thinking happy, for example. In fact, any time we aim for happy, we use yellow. That's why McDonald's used to use it so regularly to give people that sense of cheerfulness that they get to eat McDonald's rather than the depression of realizing that you're stuck eating McDonald's. It can also bring out a sense of energy. Uh, just look at Superman, for example. The energy of the yellow sun. Well, they're drawing that idea from somewhere. Yellow tends to be energetic. If you are in a yellow room, you will tend to become energetic just before you fall into either sort of a mania or anxiety or some other form. This is why you have to be careful what colors you choose for your rooms at home. This is why we use blues and grays and taupe because they're calming and they don't have these impacts. Let's look at violet. Violet is a royal color, but it's also a really comfortable color, isn't it? You just want to kind of wrap yourself in the violet. And this is why artists like Rothko will use violet. It has certain ideas behind it. It's comforting. It's beautiful. It's something that we can look at for hours without a problem, but at the same time, it works like sensory deprivation. You look at it and it draws out the ideas that are already there. It's not implanting new ideas into your mind like a painting such as the Mona Lisa. So it draws these ideas out. Now, color field painting can also involve multiple colors. Something like, well, this. Now this is painful because these are contrasting colors. These are colors from exactly opposite sides of the color wheel. And right where the red and green meet, that is really painful if you really look at it because one eye will be in red, one eye will be in green. And by the way, if you look at this from a projector, you know, you walk in front of a screen with a projector going and you stand right in the middle where you're one eye is being hit with red light and one eye with green light, you will get a migraine almost instantaneously. Trust me, I teach this stuff in a classroom. So this sort of thing gives you a different sense. We don't get the sense of danger from red. We don't get the, the sense of growth or spring or jealousy or any of those implications from the green. Instead, we're looking at the interaction between the two. We're focusing on that almost manic energy we get from this. And this is a manic energy that artists such as Van Gogh tapped into when he painted Night Cafe, just as one example. So these ideas of color are not new, but what the color field artists are doing is they're focusing entirely on that. They want to illuminate, eliminate all the illusions so that you only focus on the emotional impact of the colors that you're looking at.